Welcome back guys. So I have 10 reasons why you do not want a computer like this one. And we're gonna get into it right now. Okay, so there's a few reasons why you may want a computer like this. First reason is obviously the obvious is the size, the compact shape. It's easy to fit on anything, easy to carry, no problems there. But the problems outweigh the benefits of this type of system. You don't want something like this it is basically because of that. No expandability. You can't put a graphics card in this. You can't put a CPU cooler in it. You can't do a lot of things with this case. And it's mainly because of the dimensions of it. And even if you were to take the motherboard and the hard drive and all this other stuff out and try to put in another case, more than likely you're going to find that the holes that line up for that motherboard don't line up for a typical standard case. So as you guys can see here, I have three different styles of cases, all right? I have a large, a medium, and then a small. Dell Optics 7 Series computer. Now, this motherboard is very different from this motherboard. Even though they're both micro ATX boards, they were built and purpose for the case. So you couldn't put it in something like this if I wanted it to. It just wouldn't work because this was made for this case and this case alone. So stay away from these types of computers, guys. You don't want these, you want these. This is what you wanna aim for if you're gonna go that route and you're worried or you're scared that you can't do it. Computers are easy. There's a million videos, a million helps, and on top of that, you have me. I will be glad to help you out. If you just want a regular computer and just something to check your email, do a little Facebook on it, I understand. But most people that get computers want to expand them. They want to put more RAM, a better cooler, you know, more hard drives, more this, more that. But you can't do none of that in this case. It just does not allow it. And I found taking this stuff out and putting it in another case doesn't work either because like I was saying, it's priority. Pri Y'all know what I'm saying. Anyway, moving on. So, one of the things that I was looking at on this was, man, enable for me to just simply put more RAM in it, I gotta take this fan out, this DVR or this DVD drive, and then this whole bracket assembly just to get to the RAM. That's another thing. It's a pain in the butt to work on. So when it comes to systems like this, when these small form factor cases, I highly recommend that you do not do it. I stay away from them. If you're going to build a computer or think that you want to build a computer and you want to go the route with, okay, I want to buy a computer that already has all the software and licensing and everything in it so that way I don't have to mess with it and then just put it in another case and then put a cool CPU cooler on it and a graphics card and all that stuff, that's great. You can do that, but not with one of these and especially not with the Dell Optics 7 series. Those are real priority or pri proprietary, meaning the motherboard sits in there goofy, the holes are cut differently, and it just would not work for a standard ATX or MATX or ETX, whatever case size that you want to put in this. So one of the things that I am tasked with today is to find out why this computer won't work. What's wrong with it? The first thing that I did do was run it through a leaf blower and blow all the dust and sediment out the best I can. If this power supply goes out, you cannot use a regular power supply, especially the ones that are in all standard computers, you wouldn't be able to use it. You would have to call Dell and get a power supply that is fitted for this factor and that would fit. That's another headache. Same with the other components. Now, some of it is pretty standard, like this DVD drive and the RAM and the CPU cooler, that's pretty standard. But the height of it, you can't go any higher unless you didn't take the case off. And there's just not much room to work with in these. So when it comes to computers, I tell people to stay away from these form factors. Don't buy these. You know, there's 
the list of issues that comes with them is not worth the benefits of owning one. The thing will benefit is the size of it, and that's it. They don't even put very much computing power, even in the newer models like this, they don't put much computing power in them. It's just because you cannot fit too much computing in here because high performance parts make heat. And this case, and this factor can only dissipate so much heat because of the way that it's built. Now, I give it to HP for putting plenty of ventilation holes in it. I give it to them. That's smart on their part. One for the CPU, one for the power supply, and then one just to uh, blow air in or exhaust the hot air out. Usually you have two air intake and one air outtake because that's how you need and able to have positive pressure inside of your case. Positive pressure is very important. You have positive pressure, negative pressure, and you have neutral pressure. Basically what that means in a simple factor, that positive pressure is that you have uh, just the right amount of airflow going in as you do out. So for an example, you have two fans that blow air in and you have two fans that blow air out. That would be a positive pressure. Neutral pressure is basically where you have fans blowing in and nothing coming out, or you'll have two fans blowing in and one fan blowing out. That causes kind of a neutral balance. There's not enough intake and outtake to run the flow of air correctly. And then you have negative pressure. Negative pressure is definitely not what you want. Negative pressure would be like having two fans that just blow the heat out and nothing blows in. That would be negative pressure. So when you're designing the case or when you're putting your fans in your case, you want to keep in mind of the stability of pressure, negative or positive. That's just the way it works, but that's a good tip to follow. Fortunately, HP did a good job on this. They put plenty of ventilation all the way around it, which I got to give them credit for that. That's pretty cool that they did that. Uh, smart design on their part because I knew that this computer is probably going to be shoved up underneath a desk or somewhere in a tight place because of the factor of it. So anyway, I've given you guys a couple of reasons why you don't want to own one. No expandability, they're a pain in the butt to work on, most of them are proprietary, meaning you can't, they won't fit in other standardized casing, and the upgrade. There's really no upgrades in this at all other than maybe put a new hard drive and new RAM in it. And that's about it, but that's all. So anyway, I'm gonna figure out what's wrong with this computer. I need to plug it in, hit the power button and find out what is wrong with it. So let's do that now. Yeah, I know there's no signal in it. Uh, hello. the mouse the mouse is clearly on but there's no indication of the RGB coming through to let me know that it's it's getting a signal so I may I may have to uh, take this in the house and put it on the other system because I can't I can't get nothing to come out of it I removed that fan there but enable for me to get this thing out, I have to remove the CPU and the CPU cooler. Yay, more non-necessary work to do. You get all that out, the hard drive bay, see how there's arrows pointing on it? Those are a good indication of which way this thing may need to go. So, oh, well that was easy. And there you go, there's the cage. Come on out. So what I'm going to do is I have a couple of hard drives, some SSDs. One of them has Windows XP on it and the other one has Windows 10 on it. What I'm going to do is go grab those hard drives, plug them into the computer and see if I can get the system to come up. The whole idea is you want to try to do process of elimination. So once, let's go here to the thermal paste and let's get some thermal paste out. Now, when it comes to thermal plate, thermal paste, 
you only want just a little bit of it. There's a reason why it's called thermal paste and not thermal crust. So you just want a little bit right there in the middle of the die. That's it. About the size of a little pea. All right. And when you smash it down and you give it a little wiggle, you see the surface area that it, that, that little small dot has covered? almost takes up the whole plate. So that's really all you need, just that much. All right, so I got my two SSDs here. One of them, let's see here, this is 60. That's the Windows XP service pack. And this one should be my Windows. Yeah, Windows 10. So this already had Windows 10 on it. So let's try it with a Windows 10 SSD and see what happens. Oh, what do you know? CPU fan failure, that's fine. So it is the hard drive because the hard drive before wasn't even kicking on. I put a new SSD in it and boom, it happened. So let's try it again. system fan has failed f2 to continue that's fine first drive okay so remember earlier i was talking about how the mouse wasn't lighting up and not doing anything you see how the mouse is lighting up now that's how i know it was reacting so that right there was a quick troubleshoot i figured it out that it was that hard drive the hard drive's bad and look at that the system's working beautifully now with my ssd in it so right then and there, I just troubleshooted it. I was thinking it might be the RAM, motherboard, CPU. No, whenever your system just flat ups, you, tar you turn it on and it just black screen, that's usually because the hard drive. So that's why I wanted to get into the hard drive and take it out and flip it and see what my result was. And that's the result. It's a bad hard drive. So I'll hook that up to the test bed and see what exactly is wrong with it. Maybe there's a bad sector in it. Maybe it's not spinning. One of the platters may not be reading. I don't know, maybe it has a leak in it. I don't know. But I do know that this job just got a little bit more pricier because now I'm gonna have to put a hard drive on there. And if that hard drive's corrupt, then that means I have to put a fresh install of Windows, which is a little bit more money. So I think I'm gonna end it right there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is the reasons why you don't want to buy a computer like this. The, the headaches that come with it. The only benefit of a computer is the fact that it is a small form factor. Other than that, you lose on everything else. Upgrade, I mean the compatibility for taking it into another case, the parts, um, you know, working on them is a nightmare because you saw how much I had to take apart and able to get it to go. So, all right, I'm done. Now I know what to do and how to fix it. It's fixed, we're good to go. Thank you guys, and as always, you guys be cool. Make sure to drop a like if you're new to the channel. Welcome, hit the subscribe button right there. Boom, right there, subscribe. Thank you, as always, you guys be cool, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace. Hey, if you